Hey folks, and welcome back here to Gatekeeper Media as we continue to bring you coverage of the 2022 LWS Open at Idlewild out in Burlington, Kentucky. We're in round two with our chase card, and we're now in the back nine. And we appreciate you all tuning in. We'd like to give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters who help make this coverage possible. Yet again, it is Dustin Murray here on the mic, bringing you the commentary alongside Nathan Queen. Yeah, happy to be out here. We got to see... Quite an array of scores, as you see here, with a few eagles on the front, along with a turkey mixed in there from Matty O. Uh, a little bit of struggles from Matt Bell and Ezra, as you see some bogeys on the card. And Isaac Robinson is the one setting the pace right now at this point in time in the lead with Gannon Burr and Kyle Klein a few strokes behind. And Alden Harris is our closest one here on the chase card. There's four strokes behind the leader at this point in the round as we get ready to get back into the woods here on hole number 10. Yeah, hardest par three on the course today. This stump that we're passing over now is about 255 feet off of the tee. If you can throw a right-handed backhand at that point and then s gently fade off to the left and get a little skip up the hill, it's going to be a great play. Uh, forehand plays as well, but you have to have a lot of power and a lot of touch. And Alden kind of got caught up on that right-hand side of the fairway. Just kind of pulled this disc over a little too much off the tee. Oh, wow. Similar story here for Matt Bell. And those two shots, part of the reason why this hole is the hardest part three on the course. Yeah, it's a very narrow corridor that requires a very particular shot. A particular set of skills. <laughs> Sorry. Got into the Liam Neeson there for a second. So we're going to see <laughs> that that drive not quite get there either. See if Matty O can make it happen. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Let's go. Yep. Oh, and what a line. That's the golf that Matt loves to play, man. You know, coming from the South Alabama area, playing all the wooded golf. Feels at home in these tight lanes. Oh, my God. Yeah, and gets that hyzer stand up nicely with the soft finish. Matt Bell getting up there with a chance to save his par. Going to need a good putt, though. Oh, nice toss there. Yeah, that was a tricky little shot. Absolutely. Made the most of it. Speaking of making the most of it, Ezra almost finds the change. Just flying deep. We've had a couple of close calls, and then we actually did have a throw-in from Adio on the front nine, so it's oh. been... Crazy. It looks yeah. like the weather's also gotten a little better here on the back well, nine. Lots of chain hunting here. And, yeah, we do have the rain is done now. Definitely Sweet. no more rain for the day today. The sun's starting to pop out. Matteo, one of only eight players today to card the birdie on hole 10. So some rare stuff you just watched right there, guys. Yeah, again, Matteo, you know, coming from Creole and playing the Mobile area of Alabama, you know, plays a lot of wooded golf, and I know it's his favorite style to play, so not surprised to see him do well out on a course like this. So we go from the hardest par three on the course to the easiest par three on the course, 242 feet. You've got a gap to hit about 115 feet off of the tee. If you hit that gap, there is a couple other trees to hit afterwards, but mostly you've done what you need to do. And, uh, a, there's, you know, the basket's a bit on that box, so if you don't make it on the box, a little bit of an uphill putt, but nothing too tough. Let's take a look at Matteo's form here, though. You can see how high he keeps his putter up through his whole swing until he brings it down straight across his chest at the end. Yep. One of those players that all you need is a silhouette and you know exactly who you're looking at. Not really anyone else throws like Matt. And he found it kind of his own way. You know, he's before the YouTube generation, so really just kind of figured it out on his own over the years. Oh, and all then pulls that one a little. The backwards four trees, you like to call it. Yeah, it's unfortunate when you know out of your hand. You know, you kind of still want to watch your disc fly, but you already know it's going to hit something. Yeah, it's a very, very tough feeling for sure. Oh, and this one, getting lucky down the right side. That not the intended line there. 
but catches that box in front. He'll have that uphill putt. And Matt attacking the gap, and he is going to get through. Sends it just left and deep at the basket. Inside the circle mm. still, but a tricky death putt. Yeah, nice chain high bid there. Trying to get that ace run. See those yellow ropes there? They're just spectator ropes, so he is in bounds, no hazards or anything of that sort. Pretty good up there. Here's Matt Bell just inside the circle. Oh, ho, ho. man, that's pretty rude. That is very rude. Yeah, that was a lot of chains on that right side. It's like one of those 80-20s. You feel like a good portion of the time is going to stay in, but not for him today. Ezra, though, able yeah. to find his birdie. Yeah, fighting his way back to even now. Struggling early, but picking it, picking it apart a little bit, getting back to even. Now Alden Harris here looking to save par, and he'll be able to accomplish that. So not taking any damage yet here on the back nine. Of course, went seven down through nine on the front half of the course, and slowing down a little bit, but still a lot of holes left to play here. Matteo, after a great drive straight down the middle, gets almost as high as the basket, taps in an easy birdie. And he started off the front nine with the turkey, looking to do the same on the back half of the course here, it looks like. Matt Bell will drop in the par, and we head on to hole 12. Yeah, a 644-foot par four. We're going to throw it about 230 to 240 feet, and then dog leg to the right. Any movement to the right is going to give you a better chance to get out of this gap and then get right around this corner before you fade to the left softly to access this pin. Difficult hole, really, mm -hmm. to get a birdie on and lots of danger with all, with this dog leg right. Yeah, it feels like you have to be in a very particular place off the tee to have a chance, and even then the approach can be so tricky with that downhill nature to the hole. Yeah, like that looks like it was straight down the fairway the whole way, which it was, but definitely too fast and pushed along. He's going to be pinched off for that second shot. Yeah, this really feels like one of the trickiest approaches really on the course, honestly. And Ezra trying to be touchy with it, not to go too far, and just doesn't quite snap it enough to get that right drift. Yeah, gets hung up on the left-hand side. Alden was kind of risking the same thing, but gets that slow turn and gets up there. Yeah, not trying to move right. Let's see what he does here. Similar shot to the way we, that we saw Matty O throw, just in a different form, of course. He's got that slow putter shot, really has a low downswing before he pulls it up high across his chest. But... Similar straight shot out of the different forms, and this is early. Oh, yeah. From Matt Bell. Absolutely. Could be a very tricky situation as we see Ezra. Ooh. Almost a oh. great line, but just catches one and gets ricocheted left. Yeah, had an opportunity for a pretty spicy line there and almost made it through. Matt Bell just kind of pitch it back up to the fairway and does center himself. So, you know, doing the best that he could given where he was. And even Alden here pushed too far. He yeah. probably threw it about 250 feet instead of 240. Oh. Now he's got that pinched off angle, and he did not handle it well this time. Yeah, now it's about the battle with the V-Tree. And Matt Bell will stay inside of it, getting some good skips. Well done. What a par save. He doesn't know it yet, but he's he's right there. <laughs> That's true. It is blind from where he was, but when he gets up there, he'll be elated. And forehand roller, man. I feel like this is one of the holes you ha you see these a lot if you're not in the right place. And not too bad. He's got a chance to run it if he wants, but we saw yesterday that can get a little dangerous as Raven ran his from that around that area and rolled on away. Forehand roller here as well from Alden Harris. Kind of burns out early, though. And 
rack a number of full hand rollers perhaps here in front of us, Nathan. Yeah, I think we're going for three in a row right now. I'm not sure we're going to get to a fourth, though. I think they all made it. Out. Oh, well, nope. That's where you're wrong, Nathan. That's where you're wrong. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, never mind. You're right. You nailed it. <laughs> and almost pulls out the forehand roller, but instead, just a nice little flex shot. Actually gave himself a gap, too, on this guarded green. Oh, Ezra. Like Ooh. That's the second time he's hit metal from a distance like that. Yeah, that was full run right there. there was Absolutely. No, no layup. Oh, and Matt! Matt, Matty O going turkey on the front, turkey on the back to start with a huge putt right here. My goodness, man. That's going to be roll tides all around. You know it. Oh, man, what a putt. I tell you what, backwards hat Matt has some swag to him when he goes for those putts, man. I think you should just leave it like that. The front face and hat, Matt, this is a little too serious. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens the rest of the round and uh, maybe maybe let him know. Stop turning that hat forward. It's uncanny how many times he switched it throughout the course of the round. Maybe we can get like a stat tracker at the bottom of the screen or something. I'm sure our editor wants more work to do. Man, he's got – so hole 10 – Hardest part three on the course. This is the second hardest part four right here. He's crushing it. All right, here we are at hole 13, 584 foot. Par four, slight change from last year. They moved the basket off of that island to the left, pushed it longer through the woods and given you a second gap to hit. If you can get about 380 feet off the tee with uh, moving to the left as well. Oh, oh, yeah. oh? the second kick. <laughs> the second kick yeah. bailed him out there. Yeah, that was definitely going to be OB. He's not quite in position. You know, if he would have had the sock instead of the towel, I think that would have went better. So people will catch that reference in the practice round and hide a lot last year. Definitely. Matt Bell absolutely lacing a drive here. Gets well past that 380 I was talking about. A little bit to the right side, but doesn't have much distance left now. Absolutely. That was a fantastic shot off the tee. All the inside. Uh -oh. And that's OB. Yeah, rough start to his back nine so far. It's going to be difficult to get up and down for a par from where he's at. Absolutely. See if Ezra can get through the infamous Y. Yeah, but inside again. He's able to fight through. Yeah, lands inbound somewhere at least. And Alden still going to be out of position from over there where he's at. He's uh, looking towards a double bogey at this point. See what Matty O can come up with. Oh. Oh, my goodness. What a shot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is so ridiculous from the position where he was to make that happen. I'm just surprised it didn't go in. I mean, at this point... <laughs> You're right. I mean, you might as well. Wow. Another incredible shot. I mean, he is just, he's there. just on one right now, man. He's, he's feeling it. And Alden, not somewhere you really expect to be. But it's a pretty good shot off there. Yeah, I feel like that was about as good as it could have gotten from where he was. Ezra kind of got caught up again, so still has some ground to cover here on the approach. And, oh, that's a, that's a kick he doesn't want. I like I liked the reservation. Then he pats the tree afterwards. So kind. <laughs> <laughs> the trees always yeah. win, by the way. It's a 100% win rate. Yeah, I think he just needed a little bit of comfort from it. Yeah. Tree yeah. reaching out to him there. <laughs> Throw me a lifeline. 
Got an opportunity here to hit a long putt, get it going a little bit. Oh, and he goes ahead and jams it for the par. There you go. That's Great one way to. That. That's one way to battle back. See that the the tree reached out to him. Yeah. It, said here, I know my friend was mean, but but you're gonna make this putt. You got this. Yeah. He sent some signals through the root system below and got him there. As here's Matty O. All that miracle work just to come up short on the putt. That's a little tough to swallow, I imagine. Yeah, definitely so. Been on a roll. We haven't seen him miss a putt yet. Yeah, not Almost. really. Surprised to see that one not quite fall. It did, you know, it went in for a little bit low, but it caught some chains. So Matt will indeed settle for the par. As we head into hole 14, another par four here. Yeah, another difficult par four, averaging over par 556 feet. If you can get around this corner to about this leaning tree, uh, that's kind of uh, the minimum that you would like. You do have a small gap to hit off of the tee, though. If you can get to that leaning tree, you have about 220 feet into this green. You do have to cross and will be ditched on the way there for your second shot. Forehand here. Oh, play some pinball there. Yeah, just a bit inside. And forehand is going to be the play here. Uh, backhand is possible to do, but just the way that the ground slopes, very easy to cut mm -hmm. roll to a difficult position. I look like that was Matt trying to flex a pretty overstable fairway. And Oh, and he's what? just getting through everything right now. I mean, just a bit left side, but what trees? Yeah, trees mostly made of air, I hear. Depending on who you are. We'll see what the trees think about Ezra. Or if it was just for one hole. Oh. I mean, pretty pretty friendly, all considered. That is very friendly, as that carries quite a bit down the fairway. Uh, it's pretty... It's I won't say open but it's pretty sporadic over there where he could definitely have an opportunity to reach the green. Mm. Not as much progress as Alden wanted, obviously, but at least has a lane here out in front of him. Oh, and that came out a little early. Yep. But still, you know, maintain moving forward. Not, just kind of looked like it slipped almost and just got out really low out of his hand. Yeah, but worked out great. Almost went too far into the ditch. He's going to have a long look for the birdie. Not quite room for Ezra to get out. Looked like he was trying to manufacture something. But he'll be pitching up for a par now. Matt does have a route here for the putter. And it's tracking and just fades out before it gets to the pin. He's yeah, it doesn't quite, doesn't quite give us another throw in, but he's going to have another opportunity for a birdie. Flick from a uh -oh. knee here from Alden. Does get across the ditch. Looks scary for a moment there. It's a little touch and go, but he makes it happen. Just one of those rounds for Ezra right now. You can find something to hit. He's finding it. And Matt goes deep on that bid. Just outside the circle here is Alden Harris. And he will capitalize. That's an incredible par save. Surely. Hitting nearly first available in a very tough position for his second shot and then has to make a tough putt too. Ezra also able to connect on a circle's edger for his par. Yep. Good pick up after being stuck in the woods and having to just kind of pitch out and fight for it. Matty O collects the birdie here, three for four, in the 11 through 14 stretch. Yeah, moving him to eight down on the round now, trying to put together something hot. 
Make some moves. Absolutely. Certainly getting some work done here. So everyone else is going to settle for the par here with just a few holes left to play in our second round. Yeah, and another par four. Averaging over par today, hole 15, 487 feet. Kind of a tight gap for the righty backhand off the tee. If you can crest the top of that hill right there, then you're going to have a fairly easy upshot if you stayed in the middle of the fairway. If you if you don't quite crest that hill, very difficult upshot as you've got some tricky footing. Absolutely. Very uphill hole. Hard to really even see how uphill it is from this view. You kind of get to see oh, it there. Nasty root kick. If that was about two inches higher, he may have skipped up and been in an ideal position, but hitting that root, he's now out of position for a birdie and is going to have to see what distance he can get with a little turnover shot. Oh, what a shot from Matt Bell, though. Laces it. And that is what you want right there. Yeah, that doesn't really get any better. A little low there, but a great skip forward for Ezra. Yeah. Right Gets the ground play. That, yep. Yeah, against the ground play Matty O was looking for. We've got two players in prime position for their second shot. Oh, that one's just kind of yanked. Yeah, sometimes if you've gotten used to the rain and you have a system set, to get your grip right for a rainy day, and then all of a sudden it stops raining. It can be difficult to get your grip right. Did that just turn into a roller? Yes. Did he just? That yes. has to be a paper plate. Yeah. That is such a flippy <laughs> disc. Oh my goodness. But yeah, with, uh, with the change in temperature, it gets more humid, so that system you were using now needs to be adjusted and it can be difficult to get that grip right. Uh, so Matt Bell fights up there to the circle one area. Give himself a chance to grab a birdie here on 15. See if Ezra, who also did well off the tee, can try to capitalize just as much. But oh, that's a that's a kick that just knocks it off course. And here's yeah, what just... Matt's left with. Forehand roller with one of his putting putters, I think. Let's go, baby. And that's incredible touch to be able to pull that off and put that inside the circle. Speaking of touch. The fact that Alden's probably going to save par here with that tee shot is really impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of impressive. Oh, Ezra. outside circle, too, at that. Man, look at all these throw-ins and long putts that we're getting to watch today. Yeah, I got to imagine that's probably right around 70, 75 feet there from Ezra. That was quite something. Yeah, Ezra fought his way back to even, ended up taking a double bogey, but trying to get back down there again now with that long 70-footer. And it's kind of nice to see that because he's had two that were really close from distance. That one connects. Speaking of connecting, Matt Bell will follow suit. So a couple of birdies here on 15. Matty O likely to join the club. Yeah, and that'll actually be his par. But a great par save from Alden. We'll take a short break. My name's Garrett Gerthy. People may know me as Double G, and I've been making Double G craft jerky since I was 16 years old. And while Wakona and I are driving, don't have time to stop and eat, so I always have her grab me a small bag of Double G jerky. You got smash crack pepper on Tuesday. You can Wednesday, you got the garlic. Late in the round, you know, hole 14, you might need a little pick-me-up. Pull out some Double G jerky. Grab the big bag because you're going to have to share. You can find Double G Craft Jerky at DoubleGJerky.com. Hole 16, our second par 5 on the course and easiest hole for the second day in a row. 969 feet. If you can get about 400 feet off of the tee, it's a pretty safe play to keep it inbounds. 
and then carry the second shot to the bottom of this hill, pitch across and get your easy birdie, or you can get aggressive, as many players have done so far this weekend, as we've gotten double-digit eagles on this hole both days. Yeah, you kind of have two aggressive options. You either go for the island on your second throw, or you can just try to push maybe just short of it and give yourself a long putt for eagle. So just depends on how aggressive you want to get. But as you said, the more, I guess, standard course of action is, you know, kind of playing it for birdie with, you know, 400-foot shot sequence. And this is a huge distance shot right here. Oh, it one just fortunately yeah. finds the OP, though. Yeah. Gets a full flight out of it, so he'll move all the way down there. But going to be throwing three. Matt also needs this to settle down. If it gets too bad of a flare, nope, sticks in. Gets the green. Alden, after going seven down on the front nine, having a bit of a rough start. Or I guess we're really past start on this back nine. Having a bit of a rough back nine needs to pull it together for these last three holes and keep that solid score intact. Yeah, good looking shot out of the hands. Should be near center cut. Yeah, that's, that's what you need. So here's Stun of Shades, map mode. Drifting off to the left. If it's far enough, yeah, he's made it around Oh, he has not made it around that OB area. Mm. Does end up OB over there left side. Yeah, a couple of uncharacteristic misses there from Matt. As that is going to make its way up there, just outside. Yeah, he Good. looked like he made it over to the left side of the green there in bounds, right around circle two. Alden crashing, kind of just on that standard course of action to play for birdie. This is Ezra throwing three, and he's launching another missile down the fairway. Yeah, this looks to be right. Needs to hit those trees and does so too late. I believe I saw a pretty big splash over there. Yes, there was a splash. Matty O, he look it up onto the green. That's a cool shot. Sun right on the chains across the creek. Oh. Oh, and Alden trying to hit the chains, but catches the band. Luckily stays in bounds, though. Oh, Ezra Ooh. catching some chains there. That will stay on the island as well, so no harm in that run. Here's Matt Bell. He can catch another Matt Bell putt. Oh, just... A little bit too low. Some near fireworks here on 16 for multiple players, but now everything will kind of start settling down as Alden Harris will still wind up with the birdie. As he was kind of playing the safest of anyone out of the group and is rewarded for it. As they're at least able to carve the par after going OB off of the tee. Matt going to take a nice birdie to be three down in his last four holes, put him to four down for the round. Yeah, starting to catch a good wind here on the last few holes of this back nine as Matt will card the par, kind of just maintaining position as we head into hole 17. Yeah, 287 foot par three with this winding OB creek down the entire fairway. And then you've got this little 15 foot circle to peninsula green mm, it's so treacherous just, uh, yeah ob everywhere here ideally just run it and have a tap in par if you don't happen to land in bounds yeah i mean that really is kind of the hope or if you can drift left enough like this you could catch this other flat oh but it gets to skip in the water i was gonna say if you sometimes get that gentle fade by right where that spotter was you can sometimes just kind of drift left and stay in kind of what Alden's looking for here, but catches a tree 
Rolls Ooh. out. Ooh, okay. That'll play. Yeah, you kind of start to get concerned that maybe it's going to take a, too much of a roll, but that'll settle down for him. Uh, oh. Dang, catches a nice couple kicks. It looks like he'll be have a pretty close putt for his part. And here's Matty O throwing his new Tour Series disc. Trying to give it some love early, but <laughs> under the bridge. Yeah, and he'll have to putt that from the other side also. So a bit of a circle's edge tester there for him. Important shot for Alden. Woo, and just barely squeaks in bounds. Yep. We'll have a chance to save the par here. Here's Matt trying to get par from the other side to the moat, and that'll do. Yeah, no surf across this bridge. He'll just do the slow walk. Low left side for Ezra. He'll be able to save his par. Matt Bell going to be looking to do the same thing. Asking the spotter about where it crossed out. Mm hmm. Maybe also. Walk yeah, go ahead. Uh, with this hole only being 287 feet, we still only had 21% of the field, so about 20 players card the birdie today. Yeah, I mean, it's a really tricky little hole, man. That's for sure. He had a couple of holes on this course that have kind of these little windy creeks that feature around the green that can sometimes cause some trouble. And this one's probably the one that gets featured the most on as we now head to a very challenging final hole. Yeah, second day in a row, the hardest hole on the course to finish your round. 650 feet. If you can carry 300 feet off of the tee and land in the middle of that fairway the drone was flying through, you'll have the best opportunity to get up and down. Uh, if you can get further, that's great, but just ideal, the, the hardest part about this is to land in the middle as it, the hill does slope left to right also. So disc angle when it meets the ground, very important. Yeah, it feels like one of those holes that it's just so hard to say in the middle, but if you're not in the middle, it, it's just so hard to come up with much. This looks to be, that was a good touch off of that tree. He's now in the middle. Didn't quite get that full 300 feet, but he should have less than 400 feet to the pin from there. Yeah, almost finding the prime real estate, certainly at least center position to work with. See how Ezra Robinson can cap things off. Looking to get pretty aggressive here at the distance driver. Yeah, that's a big swing. Right. Oh, oh boy. Fantastic. Oh, my God. He's made it he's all the way to the mouth. Are, oh, and now it. he's not going to be able to throw. Oh, no. That was so good. That looked amazing, man. Yeah, you don't see many players get aggressive um, like that on this hole. Matty O had a pretty good shot going. Ends up down on the right side. I hope Ezra has something. It looked like he skipped into that left a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I would. Th I thought maybe he might have just gotten past it. We'll see that, or maybe at least he can like straddle out and forehand something. I don't know. We'll see. Great second shot here from Alden to at least get out and make sure he can get his par. Yeah, you see him going with the standstill there. He was on a downhill slope, so probably a bit muddy from all the rain that we've had. Matteo. Getting a little unfortunate roll on the left. Yeah, definitely mud. You see Matt Bell oh, yeah. slip right there. Power what slide. What a slip, though. Wow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Matt actually still can straddle out here and flex a forehand around and try to still maybe get up here to the green. Yeah, punches it through the center. Well done for Matt there. And, yeah, here you go. Ezra does have a chance to straddle out for the forehand. Awesome. I'm glad he's got something. That is such an incredible tee shot on this hole. You never see anybody get out of the woods. He's going to go for that flex around the trees and pushes it long. He's got 
just outside the circle, downhill clean look. Yeah, you don't see a heck of a lot of birdie looks on this hole. Especially not off of that deep of a tee shot. And we'll see. I Kind of will it for him. See if he can make it happen. Yeah, this would be a great feeling. And there you go. Getting a birdie. Only 15% of the field. Getting him back to even for the round. Not what he was looking for, but definitely a fight. And always better to not finish over. Yeah, well done there from Ezra Robinson. A rare birdie, as you were noting on this hole. And then fashion, he did it in even more impressive. As we see Alton Harris tap in the par to finish off his round. Yeah, more bogeys and above than even pars on this hole. As 45% of the field taking bogey or above. Man, not surprising to hear that number on this hole. As Matt Bell will tap out his par, and we'll see Matty O. Like he should be able to do the same thing here. Great scrambling to get him up to the green to get his par. Finish things off. Yeah, what a fun round to watch today. <laughs> so many great bids. Chain hits, metal hits, throw-ins. Yeah, Matty O finishing with a clean back nine, eight under overall, the tie-up up for fourth position. Alden Harris, a hot front nine, kind of cools off on the back, but still keeps himself in the mix. Let's take a look here at the leaderboard. On our chase car tomorrow, Matty O will be rejoining us with James Conrad, Kyle Klein, and Adam Hammes as Isaac Robinson still leads the pack heading into the finals. And again, we thank you so much for tuning in here to our coverage of the LDS Open at Gatekeeper Media. And we really appreciate our Patreon supporters who help make all of this coverage possible. Again, I am Dustin Murray. It's been a pleasure bringing you the commentary. It's been a pleasure working with you, Nathan Queen. Glad you've been able to join me uh, here lately in the Pro Tour and hope to see you some more soon. Absolutely. Looking forward to this absolutely incredible card we have tomorrow. We'll see you guys out there.